All right, guys. So I know this is not what you expected to see when you hit the link of this video, but I just kind of want to recap a couple things. Okay, so um, one is that this video is probably not suitable for the little viewers. Um, some viewer discretion is probably advised. Okay, just FYI, FYI on that. Two is this video is taken in quite a wide time span. Like the actual burn itself is probably three, three plus weeks ago now. And then I think after two or so weeks, I actually went back to the skeleton and then I did another video and I added that onto the end of the combine video. Um, and I kind of just talked about like, um, in my opinion, how it got going, perhaps maybe why it got going and where it started and all that sort of, and there's some different fire inspectors down too. So I kind of threw in what they were thinking, um, so on and so forth. So make sure you stay tuned for that as well. Okay. Um, this video is kind of unique in the fact that there's not very many combine full combine burn videos on YouTube. So it's kind of unique in that way, but it does get a little intense. Okay. Which is to be expected. You can understand why or realize that how out of shape Mike is when he's out there trying to beat fire with his hoodie. Cause all he does is sits in a combine cab. So, um, yeah, yeah, I should probably start running or something. Or I, I was joked around. If you ever saw me running, you should probably turn around and run the other way. But anyway, moving on, moving on. See you at the end. Around it, try get a, get a hole. Holy crap, we got a fire, boys. Uh, we got a combine gone. fire. There's, we just got to co kick to get it under control. She's gone. She's gone already. Water truck, water truck. Where's the water truck? Somebody get the flipping water truck. Right now, but the water truck is not. They're bringing it. Oh, am I taking the tractor to go get the Pro-Tail? Yep. So, and hurry, buddy. Yep, let's get that Pro-Tail. Okay, guys, we got it. She's gone. That, she's gone. Holy cow, we got a fire, boys. She's burning hot. Well, yeah, we gotta get this all cut. It's a pretty strong wind out here right now. She's gone. I'm gonna start beating that stuff out by hand. Oh, she's spraying diesel, boys. That fire is not getting past here. We gotta do something. Oh! Get it over here! here. We can't let it go. Absolutely cannot. Hey, we need that fire truck over here. We got no cell service down here. And it's windier than crap. That fire stops here. 
I know, they hit me in the head already. You got a double on that truck? Yeah. Where's that pro tail? Watch all those sparks going over there. Yep. We have been managed to just keep spraying down all this stuff with water. We're now here with shovels and our sweaters. This thing has exploded at least five solid times. One time almost knocking us all to the ground. Rupturing, I swear it ruptured an eardrum, but I think it's okay. What happened? I don't know. I don't know. Crazy. Anybody got some marshmallows? Jared, did you get your iPad out? Jared, did you get your iPad out? No. <laughs> Lucky I got my cell phone. <laughs> well, it's good that you got your cell phone, buddy. Honestly, I don't really care about that. I didn't. <laughs> I didn't. I'd be worried about my my lunch. Well, when I, I was worried about my lunch. It was already coming down my side panels. I'm like, I got to get It started at the back, eh? I literally, when I got the fire truck over the back, it was on up the plane. That's crazy. There's our pro tail. Making a big circle around this thing. A little dusty. <laughs> no, I didn't bring the marshmallows. <laughs> So it's just us here still. We did call uh, the fire department, but you gotta remember, like, they're a long ways away, right? We'll have this thing completely burned down, have it out, so killed all the way around, and ready to go home and tuck ourselves in the bed. One great thing about it being in the field, all we gotta do is do this perimeter, and we're off to the races, and yes, when it's in your land and it's all your stuff, it's your responsibility to make sure that it doesn't smolder overnight. But it's not going to. It's going to just be a hunk of scrap here. So, very quickly. <laughs> We're all talking about the Big Bang. And those tires blew up. Oh, oh, oh man. Both nearly knocked me to the ground. They said that some shrapnel hit the combines when they were down there working. And it freaked them right out. Well, that's not very ideal. <laughs> and our honeybee header is not in good condition anymore. I see. I, I, I lost my hat somewhere in here because I took my hoodie off in order to fight the fire, threw my hat to the ground, and now I got pro-tailed. Come on! <laughs> Have a good night. Ah. Oh.
There, you see that in the distance? There comes the fire truck. So this is the first combine we've ever lost due to fire. We've had lots of fires. Um, we've had small fires start on combines. We managed to get them out, no damage done. But this is the first time we've ever lost a combine due to fire. And we're still working on my opinion on how it started. Uh, don't know that yet. Definitely started at the back, right around here. And of course the wind is coming this way. He's going with the wind, so she just took it right down the combine. And I mean like that fast, as you guys saw. Tell me about the story, Jared. They're gonna to to pump some water on here. Yeah, and then I can smell something out of my vents. Yeah. And then all of a sudden my big light bar on the front. Yeah. Lit up blue. I'm it like, lit up blue. Dust is not blue. <laughs> and that dust is she. So I stopped, looked in my mirrors, and I went, I'll poop. Said I'll poop. I have to get it. No, I said more than that. He said more than that. Okay, that's fair. Gigolygosh. Gigolygosh. And then I thought I'd bring it to hell on the dog. See, we need a fire fire pump like that bad boy. That's sucking phrase. Now that's a fire truck. That's what we call a small town fire truck. <laughs> Oh, you want a big fire engine? Oh, yeah, you're going to have to go about 100 Holy miles God. to find a something like that. There she is. She's going down. A little bit of uh, electrical fire going on in there. Now I can go home. Starting to get hungry for a late supper. I don't know what time it is. It's gotta be close to 10.30, 11, I don't know. Ah. <laughs> oh! The sticker's still on it. Oh! She's mint, Mike. Oh, I can use that. Here, you can You can take You can take your good hat back. <sighs> you pro You pro it, buddy. Well, it doesn't look. Good job. Sophie. It doesn't look good. It's a souvenir. It, this is really dis. Cop? Oh, is that a cop? Or an ambulance? An ambulance? It's, ambulance. No. Is this is what the worst. This clean? really ruined my life. What happened? Wow. What? My, my combine's full. I need a dump. <laughs> Wait, we gotta get combining. Forget this crap. Is my hat wrecked? Because it just got pro tailed, and I'm quite upset about it. And a popo is here. I see blue lights over there. So they're still watering it down. Oh, I can see the water landing right here. It's burning pretty good in the rotors. And it's basically burning in that big pile of chickpeas because the hopper was plump full. That's just salt on the wound. You know that? That's salt on the wound. Well, Lee, I'm ready to go home. And go to bed. Okay. We're gonna we're gonna hit the reset, kill the power of the day, put rice on it, call John. Those these are the things that we do, and things aren't going right, and uh, it's gonna be a new one. It's gonna be a good day tomorrow. Well, we're just waiting for it to burn down here just a little bit more. At least we got good spotlights. We're using these combines. Ooh. Crazy. So I guess we're down to combine. But nobody was hurt. So uh, I don't know if I mentioned that during the banging and exploding of the combine and we're trying to keep the chickpeas from burning and half the country from burning down but yeah nobody was hurt so but Jared jumped out of there like a shot from a gun he didn't even go down the stairs he literally like bailed out and enrolled like that's how fast that combine went up that fast and then unfortunately once it got into that poly uh, fuel tank which I think all fuel tanks on combines now need to be steel at least it would buy you more time when it got going on that poly fuel tank, ho, oh, ho, 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 ho. Well, you saw for yourself. It was a little epic out there. 
So you guys probably have a lot of questions like, Mike, how did it start? We're still we're still working on that. Um, Mike, how come it went up so fast? Well, first of all, you have a poly fuel tank. It's a 1500 liter, I think, or something like that, and it was pretty full. And uh, that combine's hot because it's moving, and it's lots of moving parts. There's hydraulic, there's oil, there's you name it, and it's in there. So she goes, and it goes quick. Rubber, tires, belts. Mike, shouldn't combines have like fire suppression systems like some construction equipment? Yeah, perhaps, but it, it burns so fast, like so quick, like you, like seconds, you guys. Like when Jared called over the radio and said, fire, fire, in a frantic voice, of course, you know the drill. We wheel those combines around, we're driving over crop, it doesn't even matter. It's to get there as fast as you can. He said as soon as he threw the radio, and grabbed his uh, lunch kit, I think he grabbed, and bailed. It killed that combine dead. So, uh, and it was flaming, like, fully engulfed already by that time. So, and there's nothing plugged. I already said that. And he was combining away. No alarms, no sensors went up during this uh, procedure when the fire happened. Well, Mike, okay, well, I have some other questions in, Mike, okay. Why was your pro till so far away? Actually, the pro till was only about a mile away, but when and also the fire wagon, where when you're yelling for the fire wagon, we're on a two section field, okay? Two sections. That means two miles. So we're on one field, but the, the fire wagon is two miles away in that direction, and the pro till was about a mile away in that direction. It's all on the same field, basically. It's just that. We don't typically kind of keep moving it along as the combines go because, you know, normally you just park it on the corner of the field and you do the field and then you move off and then they're all hunky-dory and then so on and so forth. Like I said, we've never lost a combine. Maybe we'll keep it a little closer, but to be honest, you guys, it wouldn't have mattered if that fire truck was right here. You can't have enough water on hand to put that out. I'm sorry. When that combine is engulfed in flames like that, the best thing you could do is just make sure everybody is safe, pull back, let itself burn out, and just contain the fire. That's all you want to do is just contain the fire. So that's what we did. We contained the fire. Now it's our responsibility to watch the fire to make sure that um, it doesn't spread, but it's not going to because we pro-tailed it, obviously. We'll dump more water on it. We have a whole semi of water here we can dump on. Um, so yeah, I'm not too worried about that. There's some benefits though to uh, this evening. As I said, it's getting pretty late, right? It's gotta be close to midnight now, but you know, the fire happened around, I don't know, 10 or so. And uh, it's getting dewy, it's getting tough. What does that mean? It just means that these plants that we pro-tailed here, they're getting wiry, they're getting, it's, they're getting damp, they're getting wet right because there's dew out here and so it's getting tough chugging it's tough chugging now it's hard combining and uh, so that actually helped us it slowed down the fire in the chickpeas if this would have happened at three o'clock in the afternoon when it was hot out it could have been a whole different story well Mike how come there's a police car down there how come the cop is down there well actually I don't really know uh, I don't really think they come out for combine fires but I think there was a 911 mess up. Remember when I said there's no service here? We don't have service in a lot of areas, you guys. Okay? So we're trying to, we're like it's standing on top of a combine trying to find cell service to call 911. Just basically, we're not trying to call 911 to get a big fire engine out of a city. We have no interest in that. We're calling 911 because they relay it to your closest fire department, which it happens to be a small town close to us. And then again, we get our little small town local fire department. And by the way, guys, thank you so much for coming out. And uh, so we're just trying to get trying to get boots on the ground here in case we can't contain the fire and it spreads in the field. We're not worried about the combine. We're not calling the fire department to save the combine. The combine's gone. It was gone the minute I started recording. We're only calling the com the the fire department to help us contain the fire. That's the only reason why. Well, Mike, I have more questions. Sure. 
Why were you so close to the fire? Like the combine's fully engulfed. You know, you could probably uh, roast a marshmallow how close you were to that flame. And yes, that's true. It's because, again, we're trying to contain the fire. I don't care about the combine. And you know that I'm, I'm quite the risk taker at the best of times. So the main key is, is to keep that fire from getting in those chickpeas and with that wind go whoo, and be gone. Because if it gets out of this field, it would get into pasture which is really rough terrain and it's hard that's hard to fight in that rough terrain and it would get into brush which smolders down and it's, it's just a bad case and then it, then you'd be in Montana we're right close to the Montana border here you guys and then boom it's into Montana just like that so uh, it's high priority to contain the fire like I said when I was yelling for the fire wagon and the pro till and I said that that fire stopped here we drew a line and that fire stopped there. It didn't matter what happened. That fire stopped. So anyway, I might let you guys go. I don't think you have any more questions, or you probably do, but uh, we're gonna keep combining. We're down one now, obviously. There's probably a question, Mike, will ACO get you a combine? Yes, ACO will get us a combine. I am not worried about that at all. They will get us a combine. Uh, we will get a header, whether it be from Honeybee or somebody else, but they will get us a combine and get us up and operational. I am not worried about that. Well, guys, back at home. It's late at night. I know, don't laugh at me about my hat that got pro-tilled and it permanently got kinked like this, okay? So, it's, yeah. Anyway, final summary before I go home and sleep like a baby. Why am I yellow right now? Because that street light is yellow. Anyway, fire is fully contained. Combine's out. Probably just going to do some smoldering. Okay? Just want to reedify a few things. Number one, combines, tractors, semi trucks, pickup trucks, it doesn't really matter what it is, but especially combines, just due to the environment. It's hot, it's dry. They burn fast. It doesn't matter whether it be Black Combine, Ideal Combine, John Deere Combine, Case Combine, New Holland, Lexian, doesn't matter. They all burn, and they all burn fast. So uh, the most important thing is to make sure that you get out of the Combine and get anybody out of the Combine who might happen to be in you with the Combine. And if you can remember to bring your lunch, that's also very important. <laughs> Especially if it hasn't been finished yet. But... Um, Obviously, no manufacturer wants their combine to burn down, so I guess Echo's probably going to be here trying to figure out what happened, and and rightfully so, because they need to know what happened, and that way they can put a fix to whatever might, if it was, whether it be chaff maybe falling on something, or electrical, or whatever it be, maybe we won't know, but, uh, and you're probably thinking, holy crap, Mike, you're like freaking suicidal out there, man, like you're out there at the combine where it's like, blowing up and you can feel the heat of the fire and yeah that's true and are you a maniac maybe i am but you're also talking to the guy who jumps from bin to bin to bin at the top of the roof and i really don't care you know if i fall i fall if i don't i don't you know that's just who i am yeah i know i'm married to ashton yeah i know but i've been like that since i was a kid ashton knows who she married so i actually asked ashton because they were calling out on the radio like i was huffing and puffing like you in that video right like you would think that i was panicked out of my mind but really <laughs> i took my hoodie off and i'm using it to fight fire and uh, i just realized how out of shape i am <laughs> holy cow i'm out of shape but anyways i asked ashton on the drive home i'm like because the other girls in the combines like they're combining crop trying to keep the crop down right they're just mowing crop down like it's going out of style to try keep the fire from spreading and they're like, holy crap, did you see that boom? I think we saw Mike fly in the air. Like, it was epicness, like, right? Cause, and um, actually, they could feel the concussions of those explosions while they were combining. They could not only see it, but they could feel it, okay? And um, so anyway, on the way home, I'm asking Ashton. I'm like, so Ashton, were you, like, worried about me? Or, you know, because they're talking on the radio that Mike might have flown somewhere from an explosion. Like, who you knows? Slightly exaggerated, but you know what I mean. And uh, Ashton's like, nah, nah, I wasn't worried. So that's why I married Ashton. She's not worried about me. Of course she's worried about me, but she's not like, oh my goodness, oh poor Mikey, oh my goodness. You know, nah, she knows Mike's crazy. She gets it. It's who I am.
That's why she loves me. So anyway, I'm going to go home. I am home. I'm about to go to bed. I'm going to sleep like a baby. So have yourselves a good night. Adios, amigos. So now we're looking at the combine. I'm going to give you a little bit of an or what's left of the combine. <laughs> I'm going to give you a little bit of a time update. It's probably been like, I don't know, three weeks or so. Something like that anyway, since this combine burnt. So I just thought I would just add this into the last part of the video that you were just watching. So as you can see, it's 100% gone. There ain't nothing left of it. The only thing half decent are the end shields. That's it. The rest of the head are burnt. And it's 100% loss. So, um, as you can tell, he had chickpeas. And uh, when the window broke up there, it flowed through the cab, obviously, and onto the seat and whatnot there. Still the remains of chickpeas. And it's been smoldering. We've, I don't know how much water we've pumped on this thing. This is what's left. Nothing. Also, if you're not familiar, you're like, oh, well, Mike, there's a guard down there. You could still use that guard right there. Or, you know, maybe you can use some stuff. No, anything that's been burnt, heated, it's completely worthless. It's just been tempered. Uh, the integrity of that steel is 100% gone. And you can't use any of this for anything. It's just, it's recycled is what it will happen. It's just going to get recycled. As you can tell, it got pretty hot. It just melted stuff that should be up there. Uh, we'll go up in the engine compartment here in a minute. Um, that all this wire is from the tires. Yeah, there's actually wires and tires. Did you know that? Same with those over there. Remember when those tires blew? Holy crap. It blew shrapnel a long ways away. This chopper... This is the chopper. It was actually blown off the combine when the fuel tank went. And then uh, it actually landed right here. And then we just drug it out of the way because there's been, I don't know how many different fire inspectors from the insurance company, from Agco, Independence. I don't know, I've lost count. But anyway, they came down here and with all their, I don't know, knowledge, I guess you could say. And they figured out what caused the fire. But to be honest, I could have told you what caused the fire the very next day. I was down here digging into this thing the very next day. I could have told you exactly what caused the fire. Well, what caused it? Well, we'll get to that in a minute. But anyway, we're just going to go over this thing. You see this black area here? This is where the fuel. And you notice that there isn't any over here. It's all in this direction, right? Well, Mike, how come it's over here? Well, it's quite simple. The wind was blowing on about this much angle. This combine is facing directly south. The wind was just on a little bit. It's heading to the, uh, uh, the, holy crap, Mike, you know what I'm trying to say. Man, English, it's hard, hard for me. Anyway, so in a blue, most of it went on this side because the wind was going this direction. And you remember that? Because I was out over here and I could taste the diesel fuel on my lips because of the spray. That's the other side. Let's go over here. This used to be radiator, if you're wondering. Um, you gotta remember this hopper was full. So uh, the weight of it was actually just kinking stuff. You know, it got hot. There's a lot of weight there, so on and so forth. A lot of wire from the tires. And the glass obviously blew out, melted. And we'll go, let's go take a look at the rest of this header. Again, since the wind was pushing it this way, um, the fire actually got to the end of this one.
told Jared he should sit in there. <laughs> and we'll take some we'll take some pictures and we'll be like uh, finishing the last pass of 2020. Be like this, because <laughs> that's pretty much how the year has gone. <laughs> oh man, not just due to combines or anything. I'm talking COVID. I'm talking the whole the 2020 year. Okay, so now let's go let's go take a look at some stuff. Let's go up in the cab. Actually, there's some chains here. We'll, we'll do the cab on the other side. Let's go look at the engine compartment. This seems pretty solid. What's the worst that could happen? Uh. Careful where you walk. Things are a little bit melted. This was his flagpole. He's still bitter about that. Pick this thing up. Oh, shocks don't have any integrity left anymore, so that might stay. Either that or it's gonna land on my head when we get in here. That doesn't want to lift. Well, there's the engine compartment. Yep. Things are a little bit melted. -ed. Okay, let's go up top here. Still has a little bit of chickpeas that were smoldering in there. Let's go look over here, stand on this auger. There's some gears. She's crisp. This thing doesn't decide to, it's gonna buckle off for any means. So anyway, that's it. I thought I would show you a bit of the aftermath. Where am I gonna jump here? And uh, yeah, let me get down here. All right, so Everybody was working on the back. So, let's just do a recap. You guys already watched it, but I was just combining over there. Jared yells out, fire, fire. And we're obviously, we're like, holy crap. I was like, man, did he just yell out, fire, fire? But even if you're not sure, you decide that you better at least check. So I did a U-ball, as you know, and I came running up here, well, driving up here. And it was on fire right here. Pretty much going up the nine for the class nine of the combine, right behind this back tire, blowing this way. Now, given the wind, I knew beyond a shadow of a doubt, at that point, this combine was 100% gone because it was already burning into the fuel tank. There's no way, it doesn't matter how much water that maybe you happen to have on hand, that combine was 100% gone by the time I got to it, even though it wasn't over the full combine. Excuse me. The other thing that I knew is I knew it started right back here. The flame was coming up here. I knew it started back here. I knew it started on that corner of the, of the combine. And, uh, and obviously when the fire inspectors came, they determined that it started on the back end of the combine too. Surprise, surprise. And uh, <laughs> no, sir, I, th I, think, I think the fire started on the header. It must have been a canvas or something. Uh, are you saying it burnt up against the wind? Yeah, it burnt against the wind all the way down. No, no. <laughs> no, they determined that it started on the back of the combine as well. They were pointing at the right-hand gearbox. And I'm like, well, obviously it's the right-hand gearbox because I came down here the, the next day, the very next day, and did my own detective work. You don't have to be a rocket scientist to figure this out. I know maybe you need to go to school and do all this and learn all these things, but you don't have to be a rocket scientist to figure this out. The seal was popped out in the gearbox. Right on the shaft. It was just sitting there. So, uh... It lost its oil. It heated up. Mike, I have questions. Are you saying that it was the right-hand gearbox? Well, I'm saying that I come down here and the seal was popped out of that right-hand gearbox. And, uh, well, Mike, maybe the heat of the fire. No, look, it, this gearbox was white. That tells me it heated from the inside. That gearbox was black. That, tell me, that told me that it just got burnt from the outside. So that gearbox heated up. 
and it's very coincidental that that gearbox heated up and the seal was popped out. Well, maybe Mike, the gearbox heated up and then blew out the seal. Okay, that, okay, let's 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 run with that one then. So then, then you have to explain why that gearbox heated up. Well, uh, well, Mike, that's pretty easy. Obviously, you were combining in tough conditions here, and uh, it obviously heated up. It either ran out of oil, exactly. Well, okay. Well, it either it either had bad oil in it. Maybe you run it out of oil or something. Okay, let me stop you right there. That oil was checked that morning. Okay, we checked these gearbox oils. So since that oil was checked and that oil was good, that oil was clean. There was nothing degrading. There was nothing breaking down. There wasn't heated. It wasn't burnt. There was nothing wrong with that oil. Now we had run into troubles on the left ones with them smelling burnt before. But we've already had issues with this on the right ones, and that's why they put that oil cooler on, remember? Because they were heating up last year. Here, that used to be the motor. No, actually, it used to be here. So they put an oil cooler on it. So that way, it would keep it cool. So there was nothing wrong with the integrity of that oil. Now, maybe they need to do the same with the left one, but as of the right one, they fixed that problem. Well, Mike, obviously, the belt drive or something that they had running this gear motor or this this oil cooler, the thingamajigger, popped off. Pretty simple. It popped off, heated up, boomy, flames. <laughs> maybe, maybe that's what the average Joe might think, but that's impossible. Oh, how's that impossible, Mike? Because we're cutting chickpeas. Mike, what does that mean? You're cutting chickpeas. We're cutting chickpeas in low gear. Low gear, 20 bushel crop of chickpeas, 300 RPM on the rotor. There is no way that gearbox is going to heat up. Impossible. You could be running water in that thing, glue in that thing, it's not going to heat up. The only way that gearbox is going to heat up, if your oil cooler happened to fail for some reason, the only way that thing is going to heat up is two things. One, it lost its oil. Two, um... You were in Wheaton Durham and you had that rotor flying at about 1100 RPM under load. That's the only way you can make that thing heat up. How do you know? Because I have a heat gun. I use it all the time, remember? We were kind of paranoid about this last year. I use it all the time. It's impossible to heat those gearboxes in chickpeas. Impossible. Can't be done. You could pretty much run them dry in chickpeas. Not going to heat up that gearbox. But yet, that gearbox heated up. The seal was out. It popped out. It lost its oil. That's my opinion. Don't have to be a rocket scientist to figure that out. The gearboxes are in a bad spot because they fill up with chaff. <coughs> Excuse me. When it lost all of its gear oil, it soaked up all that chaff and enabled that chaff and stuff to get burning and it got burning hot. It got burning hot enough with the help of that gear oil that I just drained out to get to the plastic fuel tank, which is like right here. We had had times where last year those things were smoldering because we had these things hot. Remember, we had them hot before they, before they upgraded it to the uh, cooler. And you could just about burn the chaff right out before it would get to the fuel tank. It can't, it can't burn hot enough. There's just some chaff in there. It can smolder. But if you mix a little gear oil in with that chaff, guarantee you it would burn hot enough to get to that plastic fuel tank. In which, my, in which my opinion, no combine should have a plastic fuel tank. Just saying. But saying that, that's the cause of the fire, guys. You don't have to be a rocket scientist to figure that out. Easy peasy, life is breezy. That gearbox seal failed for some reason. It popped out. It drained its oil. You wouldn't make very many passes without uh, with its drained oil before you warmed that puppy up. Has all the chaff and gear oil sitting right on it before it could get going. There you go. Fixed. Now, anyone from Agcor, the insurance company, maybe they can't say all that, but that's my opinion. And we're gonna move on. What else could you want to guys look at? Anything else? Also, when I was out here doing my own inspection, I checked every bearing on this combine and took pictures of it. Every single bearing. And not one was failed. And including the bearing in the gearbox where the seal popped out. It was not failed. Just saying. So that's it, guys. That's a wrap, I think. Now, I know you guys got some other questions. Mike. <clears throat> What are you going to do with it? It's kind of sitting in your field here. And uh, what are you going to do with this thing? Well, we're going to do two one of two different night. It's going to go one of two ways. Either either the insurance company is going to send down a truck for it, 
pick it on somehow, put it on there, take it away. Or they're going to say, nah, we figured out the cause of it. You're right, Mike. It was that right-hand gear box when that seal popped out, lost its oil. You're right. I don't know what we were thinking. And we don't need any more evidence. Destroy the combine. In which case, we would get somebody in here who recycles this stuff. And it would all get recycled and cleaned up. Show you a couple other things here before I let you go. Um, see this axle, which is on the left-hand side, is still fairly straight. Nothing wrong with that. Obviously, this is just tin, so that's going to buckle with any type of thing. But that's that axle is pretty heavy. Let's go take a look at the other side. Here's the other side. See how bent that is? It was definitely hottest on this side. And obviously, you can see where the diesel fuel went, and it would just <sighs> soak that with diesel. said we were going to go up on here right there. That's what's left of the cab. Absolutely nothing. Jared's uh, most upset because he lost his, uh, his tool kit. <laughs> oh man, I was thinking the iPad, but you know, whatever. Hey, there's, there's a socket. 15. I think there was some more. You got to remember like that that isn't any good anymore either. Okay guys, that's it. You guys have seen enough. I'm moving on. Thanks for watching the video. And uh, obviously to conclude, no manufacturer wants to see their combine burn. But you know what? They all burn. Every color, every brand, if it's man-made, it can and it will burn at some point. That's that's fact. That is fact. So I'm going to let you guys go. Thanks for watching. And uh, we're going to get this puppy cleaned up.